Hello everybody, my name is Neil Bakiev and I'm the creator and founder of my website which is IELTSWheel.com. Today I will be explaining to you how to address an integrated writing task. Okay, I will explain to you how to approach this task in detail. Hopefully you will be able to get a high score in the TOEFL examination. Okay, so this information is taken from test one, task one, okay, integrated writing from official TOEFL IBT tests, volume one, the fourth edition, ETS, TOEFL. Okay, now uh, you will see a reading passage in front of you. Your job is to read carefully and then you should also take notes okay I mean, but you must focus only on the main ideas here okay so uh, let's just do it quickly and i will show you what i mean by this endotherms are animals such as modern birds and mammals that keep the body temperatures constant for instance, humans are endotherms and maintain an internal temperature of 37 degrees, no matter whether the environment is warm or cold. Because dinosaurs were reptiles and modern reptiles were not endotherms, it was long assumed that dinosaurs were not endotherms. However, dinosaurs differ in many ways from modern reptiles, and there is now considerable evidence that dinosaurs were in fact endotherms. Okay, so what's the main idea of this whole um, paragraph? The main idea is that dinosaurs are believed to have been endotherms. Okay, here I'm using the passive voice, I believed to, that means people believe that dinosaurs, okay, uh, were endotherms. And when you use the structure, okay, you must use the present perfect when you're talking about an event which happened in the past. If you say that dinosaurs are believed to be endotherms, this means that they are now endotherms, but we're talking about the past, the past, and therefore you should say to have been endotherms. So that's the main idea, okay? So uh, that's what we need to remember. Next, after this, we will have three supporting arguments. Okay, so here we have supporting argument one, supporting argument two, and supporting argument three. Okay, and we need to understand again the main idea of each argument. Okay, so here we have polar dinosaurs. One reason for believing that dinosaurs were endotherms is, is that dinosaur fossils have been discovered in polar regions. Only animals that can maintain a temperature well above that of the surrounding environment could be active in such cold climates. So what's the main idea of this argument? The idea is dinosaur fossils have been discovered where? in polar regions. That's it. So that's the information that we need to grasp, to catch, to understand. Okay, next. Now let's, just, let's focus on the next argument. Leg position and movement. There is a connection between endothermy and the position and movement of the legs. The physiology of endothermy allows sustained physical activity such as running. But running is efficient only if an animal's legs are positioned underneath its body, not at the body side, as they are far as they are for crocodiles and many lizards. The legs of all modern endotherms are underneath the body, so were the legs of dinosaurs. This strongly suggests that dinosaurs were endotherms. Okay, now what's the main idea? The main idea is that as dinosaur slacks were underneath their bodies, they were meant to be for running. Okay? Now, S means because. Because A, therefore B. Okay? So, as dinosaur slacks were underneath their bodies, they were meant to be. 
In this case, they were meant to be means they were supposed to be. That's what people thought. Okay, uh, next. And also, we need to remember this one. Such dinosaurs are considered to have been endotherms. Okay, so we have evidence in the four, we, um, the passage claims that dinosaurs are considered to have been endotherms. Now we have the last paragraph here. Let's read it carefully. Haversion canals. There is also connection between endothermy and bone structure. The bones of endotherms usually include structures called haversion canals. These canals house nerves and blood vessels that allow the living animal to grow quickly. And rapid body growth is the fact a characteristic of endothermy. The presence of haversion canals in bone is a strong indicator that, these anim that the animal is an endotherm. And fossilized bones of dinosaurs are usually dense with haversion canals. Okay, now what's the main idea? The main idea is dinosaurs bone structure included haversion canals which have nerves and blood vessels. And therefore, again, the dinosaurs are considered to have been endotherms. Okay, so basically, um, while reading each paragraph, take notes very quickly. Okay, just take notes, take notes, take notes. Only the keywords, only the phrases that you need to remember. Okay, um, and then next. Okay, then we have to listen to the lecture. In most cases, Okay, the professor will provide us with counter arguments. He will say, no, this argument is not correct because, and then he will explain the opposite idea. So, okay, not it's not black, it's white. Okay, John is not rich, he is poor. This country is not large, this country is very small okay so the professor will provide us with counter arguments with some examples our job okay now let's just look at the example uh, let's look at the listening section our job is to understand what the professor thinks about this reading passage okay if he agrees you want to write plus if um the professor disagrees with the idea just write minus that's it if he says i entirely disagree with this idea just minus okay which means he disagrees and that's it then you have to focus on the first counter argument then the second counter argument and the third counter argument okay so you have to take notes and then you have to focus on all of these counter arguments okay so take notes and try to understand what this lecture is about and then I will show you my model answer now listen to part of a lecture on the topic you just read about many scientists have problems with the arguments you read in the passage they don't think those arguments prove that dinosaurs were endotherms take the polar dinosaur argument when dinosaurs lived, even the polar regions where dinosaur fossils have been found were much warmer than today. Warm enough during part of the year for animals that were not endotherms to live. And during the months when the polar regions were cold, the so-called polar dinosaurs could have migrated to warmer areas or hibernated like many modern reptiles do. So the presence of dinosaur fossils in polar regions doesn't prove the dinosaurs were endotherms. Well, what about the fact that dinosaurs had their legs placed under their bodies, not out to the side like a crocodile's? That doesn't necessarily mean dinosaurs were high-energy endotherms built for running. There's another explanation for having legs under the body. This body structure supports more weight. So with the legs under their bodies, dinosaurs could grow to a very large size. Being large had advantages for dinosaurs, so we don't need the idea of endothermy and running to explain why dinosaurs evolved to have their legs under their bodies. Okay, so how about bone structure? Many dinosaur bones do have haversion canals, that's true. 
But dinosaur bones also have growth rings. Growth rings are a thickening of the bone that indicates periods of time when the dinosaurs weren't rapidly growing. These growth rings are evidence that dinosaurs stopped growing or grew more slowly during cooler periods. This pattern of periodic growth, you know, rapid growth followed by no growth or slow growth, and then rapid growth again, is characteristic of animals that are not endotherms. Animals that maintain a constant body temperature year-round, as true endotherms do, grow rapidly even when the environment becomes cool. That's all. Okay, I hope that you have taken all the necessary notes that you need. Okay, now let's just look at my notes. Opinion. So the professor entirely disagrees. Minus. The first contra argument is that the polar regions in the past were far more, were far warmer than today. And also here, polar dinosaurs might have migrated to warmer areas or hibernated as many modern reptiles do. The second counter argument is that this body structure had the advantage of supporting heavy weight and this enabled them to grow to a very large size. And the third counter argument is despite having haversian canals, dinosaur born bones also have growth rings which indicate that their growth was periodic, being slow, rapid or unchanged depending upon the environmental temperature. Okay, we have three counter arguments. Now, now our job is to write everything. Okay, so what kind of structure can we use? Now, let's look at this structure. The article states that, then clearly show the main idea of the reading passage. Then, However, the professor entirely disagrees with this statement by providing the following counter arguments. That's it. Next. Firstly, the reading claims that. Then talk about the first um, argument. Okay. So here we have the first argument. That's what you need to include. Okay, next. The professor refutes this point. Refutes means he says, no, I don't like this idea. This idea is untrue. Okay, so, and then you have to provide the first counter argument here. Furthermore, and then give some extra information. Next. Secondly, the article posits that. Okay, and then here, talk about the second argument okay next here we've got however the professor argues that however in this case means but and then talk about the second counter argument which the professor has mentioned next finally according to the passage talk about the third um, argument given in the reading uh, section okay so here we have the last one argument three okay and then the professor opposes this point oppose means to be against this idea by explaining that and then you have to include some information from the third counter argument provided by the professor. And then the professor concludes that, and then you can draw the final conclusion. Okay, so that's the structure that you can use. Okay, now let's look at my model answer. The article states that dinosaurs are believed to have been endotherms and provides three supporting arguments. So that's the main idea. However, the professor entirely disagrees with the statement by providing the following counter arguments. Okay, so the examiner will clearly understand that I have been able to identify several counter arguments. 
excuse me. Firstly, the reading claims that dinosaur fossils have been discovered in polar regions. So this is the first argument taken from the reading passage. Only those animals that are able to maintain a temperature above that of a surrounding environment have the potential to survive there. Okay, so this information is taken from the reading passage. Next, the professor refutes this point by stating that the polar regions in the past were far more were far warmer than today, which must have increased the chances of dinosaurs' survival. So this information is taken from the lecture, where the professor provides us with the first counter-argument. Furthermore, polar dinosaurs might have migrated to warmer areas or hibernated as many modern reptiles do. Okay, so we've got extra information. Next. Secondly, the article opposites that as dinosaurs' legs were underneath their bodies, they were meant to be for running. Again, this information is taken from the reading passage. Such dinosaurs are considered to have been endotherms. However, the professor argues that this body structure had the advantage of supporting heavy weight and this enabled them to grow to a very large size. So this is the second count argument. Okay, next. Finally, according to the passage, dinosaurs' bone structure included haversion canals, which have nerves and blood vessels, and this indicates that they would have fallen into the category of endotherms. Okay, so again, this information is taken from the reading passage, and this is the last argument. The professor opposes this point by explaining that despite having version canals, dinosaur bones also have growth rings. This information is taken from the um, listening section. That's what the professor said. The latter clearly indicated that growth was periodic, being slow, rapid, or unchanged, depending upon the environmental temperature. The professor concludes that this is not a characteristic of endotherms. And that's it. So once again, first indicate what the reading passage says and what the professor okay, says about this. Next, talking about, talk about the first argument and then talk about the first counter argument. Next, second argument. Then the second counter-argument, the third uh, argument, and the third counter-argument. And that's it. That's the structure of this task. I hope that you will be able to use a similar structure when taking the TOEFL examination. Okay, you can visit my website, which is IELTSWheel.com. And you can use two kinds of services, either speaking correction service or writing correction service. So if you want me to correct your responses, you can send me your audio responses from one particular test. I will analyze each response and I will show you the correct version Okay, and uh, I will create a video lesson for you and explain to you what improvements you could make in order to get a higher score. And it will cost you 30 American dollars. Or you can use a uh, writing correction service. Remember that one correction um, means that I will correct either task one, which is um, integrated writing, or task two, which is writing an essay, not both, only one task, and it will cost you $25. Thank you very much for watching and analyzing this video lesson.